Hi and welcome to the next lesson in this series where we're going to look at abstract classes. Now abstract classes are a way of defining a common interface for a set of subclasses that share some kind of functionality. Abstract classes are useful when you want to specify what methods a class must implement but not how they're implemented. So let's take a look at that uh, using a shape as an example. Now for this tutorial I need to import some things. So I'm going to say from ABC imp uh, import ABC and um, abstract classes, abstract methods, I should say, right, abstract methods, right, uh, or abstract method, rather, okay, right, so now I've got those, I'm going to create a shape class, so shape, and this is going to inherit from ABC, okay, now I'm going to, um, I don't need for my shape to have any kind of initialization, again, all shapes are different, if I wanted to have something like the name of the shape, I can do that. That would work well in a shape class, but for the purpose of this, I, I'm not going to worry about it. What I am going to do is create an abstract method, and I'm going to say all shapes must have an area defined. And I don't care at this stage how that's done, because each shape calculates the area differently. I just want to make sure that every shape has an interface that allows uh, the area to be calculated. Let's now create a circle class. And in this class, I'm going to inherit from shape. Um, and I'm going to have an initialization. So I'm going to have um, my define dunder init special method self and radius. And I'm going to say self dot radius is equal to radius. OK, now if I try to create a circle at this stage, uh, let's go circle object is equal to circle and I'm going to just pass in the value 5. I should find myself getting an error because I um, uh, can't instantiate abstract class circle without the implementation for abstract method area. It's basically saying I have to, I have to create an area method. So let's build that in now. Def area. Okay, so uh, I'm going to pass in the self. Okay, and what I'm going to do is return uh, the area of a circle. Now the area of a circle is pi r squared. So I'm going to just import math here as well. So I can do that. So I'm going to return uh, the area of the circle, which is uh, math.pi uh, and times self.radius uh, to the power of 2. Okay. So, so now we've got return pi r squared. And now what I can do is go circle or print circle dot uh, area. So I've created my area uh, and I can return it. So there it is. There's the area of my circle. Now with this, I can now create other classes. So let's create a class uh, rectangle. And again, it's going to be shape. I can um, do some uh, do another initialization. So in it, I'm going to pass in self. I'm going to pass in the uh, base and the height of my um, rectangle. So base equals base and self dot height equals height. And again, I need to create my area. So def area uh, self. And my area of my rectangle is just going to be self.base times self.height. Okay, and now again I can create a rectangle object. And I'm going to pass in two values. Um, let's make sure I've got that with the capital R. Woo, what have I done there? There we go. My rectangle. Uh, I'm going to pass in, uh, let's go with two easy numbers, so just 10 and 10. Okay, so we know what we're expecting. We should get 100 from that. So rectangle, and I'm passing in, uh, oh, I'm calling the area method. Okay, so let's run that. There we go. So I've got my 100 uh, area for my rectangle. So what's going on here then, just to sum up, we've created a um, abstract class. We've got our shape class. We've said all shapes must have this area method defined. We don't care how it's created at this point. What we're just saying is 
every shape that we uh, that inherits from the shape class must have an interface um, that allows it to uh, calculate the area. For the circle, we've done it by using math.py times r squared, and for the rectangle, we've just multiplied the base times the height. That's it. So I hope you found that uh, lesson useful and easy to follow. In the next session, we're going to be looking at one of the more interesting topics, which is polymorphism.